but that we have each other It's now time to listen to the host, our host, the director of Zambia Research and Development Center, Dr. Richard Silumbe. Dr. Silumbe, it's time to give your concluding remarks. What a successful international conference. Great thanks to the conference convener, Professor Wadia Kelvin Joseph, the deputy convener, Dr. Stilalu Sam, and the technical team. You did an amazing job. Thank you very much. On behalf of the Zambia Research and Development Center, I thank our partners who made this happen. The University of Zambia, the Information and Communications University, the Zambia Qualifications Authority, the Engineering Institute of Zambia, the National Technology Business Center and PACRA. You have shown what unit of purpose can do. And most of all, my great thanks go to incredible researchers, innovators, and authors who have made this a great event. Give yourselves a great hand. So great. It is written all over. It is being talked about in all areas. It was the theme song in the G20. It is the African promise in the 21st century. The 21st century ought to be an African century. But the question is, what are we doing to achieve it? The great Zambian philosopher Malonje Mwanza, in his book entitled Emancipating Bantu Africa from Poverty, in trying to understand the root cause of poverty, he takes us in a time machine 1,000 years ago when most Africans were affluent. He comes up with a resounding conclusion that greed in African leaders is the source of all evil. Talk of slave trade, it's greed in African chiefs. Talk of the raids and human displacement in Africa, it's greed in African chiefs. 
talk of protectorates and colonialism, it's greed in African chiefs. Talk of corruption today, it's greed in African politicians. If the 21st century is to become truly an African century, we must begin to nurture a new type of leadership, selfless and visionary leadership to take us to the promised land. If the 21st century is to become truly an African century, we must begin to engage in the battle of the mind because you are what you think. I think, therefore I am. And once your mind is conquered, it's over. You fail zero out of ten. The Chinese know what they want. The Koreans know what they want. The Russians know what they want. Africa, what do we want? We see minds sold at a price that is paid off from the profit made in one month of operation. We see land being auctioned to foreigners at a rate that makes an African a squatter in his own country. What are we doing to our resources? Look around. Who is building our roads, our schools, our hospitals? Who is running our mines? Who owns our fatal land? Who writes our books? Where are our technocrats? The sooner we answer these questions, the better, because the parallels with the 18th century Africa are frightening. Ladies and gentlemen, if the 21st century is to become truly an African century, we must begin to replace whys with why not. The Chinese have started manufacturing planes. The Koreans are ruling the electronic world. The Russians are the kings of space. And Zambia, why not? Why not make use of arable land and make agriculture king? Why not make copper king? Namibia, why not make diamond king? South Africa, why not make gold king? Why not Africa, why not? The Zambia Research and Development Center is working 24-7, day in, day out, anytime, anywhere, to make the 21st century become truly an African century. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude with these few words from Arthur Bertrand, open court. A man who has once perceived, however temporarily and however briefly, what makes greatness of soul, can no longer be happy if he allows himself to be petty, self-seeking, troubled by trivial misfortunes dreading what fate may have in store for him. The man capable of greatness of soul will open wide the windows of his mind, letting the winds blow freely upon it from every portion of the universe. He will see himself and life and the world as truly as our human limitations will permit. Realizing the brevity and minuteness of human life, he will realize also that in individual minds is concentrated whatever of value the known universe contains. And he will see that 
the man whose mind mirrors the world becomes in essence as great as the world. In emancipation from the fears that beset the slave of circumstance, he will experience a profound joy. And through all the vastitudes of his outward life, he will remain in the depth of his being a happy man. End of quote. Therefore, beginning with the end in mind, as you get on with your life's journey, think about that day when you will be finally laid down to the resting place and somber procession will file past your remains. In their minds, questions will linger on. This person we are burying today, is this world a little better because he lived? Is any life living easier because he lived? Then get out there with a sense of mission to answer these questions whilst you are alive. A person is only successful if he carries his values and happiness up to the last day. He who endures to the end shall be successful. An easy life does not make men, nor does it build nations. Challenges make men, and it is these men who build nations. So get yourself in a strong bottle of faith and anchor it with a strong anchor of hope. And never mind what happens next. Yes, the storm will strike. With the strength as if to sweep the mountains away, but never mind. Yes, the tides will rise. With the height as if to swallow the skies, but never mind, you will get there, you will get to the promised land. A thousand times again 